Hey everyone, this is Dan with Wise Money Tools. I'm glad you could join me today. So the other day I was talking with this young couple. They were considering buying a home. They had been saving for quite a little while and they had about 5% of their money that they needed for a down payment saved. The home they were looking at was $400,000. So they had saved about 20,000 at this point. The comment they made to me that it was gonna take them a while longer to save for a larger down payment because they didn't wanna pay PMI. Now, what is PMI? It stands for Private Mortgage Insurance. And what it is, is most lenders require that if you don't put at least 20% down on a home, then you have to pay PMI. It's basically an additional cost of insurance just in case you were to default on your mortgage. That means on a $400,000 home, in order to avoid PMI, you need to put $80,000 down. Now, for some reason, they were all worried about PMI instead of how the numbers would shake out over time. Now, they were good savers and they were saving about $1,000 a month. So at the risk of making this video packed full of numbers, I want to quickly walk through this couple's logic so that you can see what they were missing as well. I've often said that people step over dollars to pick up dimes, meaning they worry about the wrong part of the equation or the wrong part of the financing, if you will. Dave Ramsey does this a lot. In almost all his calculations, such as paying off your mortgage or how to buy a car, he often misses out on how to earn the dollars just to save the dimes. He's more worried about the cost of interest, as an example, rather than the wealth you can build. So let's see how this whole scenario shakes out. PMI has a cost. It's somewhere between 0.5% and 2%, kind of depends on your income and your credit score and so forth. So for this example, let's just cut it down the middle. Let's just say that the cost of PMI is going to be 1%. But I want to point out, even if it were 2%, we'd still come to the same conclusion. So again, cost of the home is $400,000. As we've said, for 20% down, they need to save $80,000. Now they essentially have two choices. They can continue to save their $1,000 per month until they have enough to put the 20% down and avoid PMI. Or they can put 5% down today with the $20,000 they have and carry PMI, which is gonna cost them about 1% as well. The advice they were getting from family was to continue to save because you don't wanna pay PMI. I have even heard real estate agents say that you should keep on saving until you have your 20% down. It's sad they don't look at the big picture. Okay, so let's look at the two scenarios. Scenario number one, they're gonna to continue to save $1,000 a month. Now to save another $60,000 for a total of 80,000, it's gonna take them five years. Now, depending on what's going on with the housing area where they live, it's safe to say that they will likely have to pay more for the home in five years as the cost of homes continue to rise. Again, I don't know what's going on in your area, but we've had a crazy decade of real estate growth. In fact, we had 37% growth last year and averaging well over 10% for the last 10 years. But let's cut that way down. Let's just say that homes are gonna go up 5% a year. That means in five years, when they have finally saved their money, the home that would have cost them $400,000 is now selling for $510,000. Now, here's what's really sad. The 80,000 that they had saved, it's no longer 20, percent of the purchase price. They now need to have 102,000 to avoid paying PMI on a home selling for 510,000. <laughs> they can't seem to get ahead. So they have several more years now that they have to save. They may be saving forever and never being able to come up with the 20% if houses keep going up that fast. So let's fast forward five years on their current plan they would still not be able to buy the home and they missed out on years of appreciation in a home. Now we need to look at what would have happened had they understood that although PMI is a cost, it may be worth paying. So if they put their $20,000 down, which is 5%, and carried a $380,000 mortgage, their payments would be right around $3,800 per year for PMI, okay? Now remember, they're saving $1,000 a month extra, so they should be able to handle 
$3,800 a year of PMI really easily. Now, here's where it's really nice. Once they have 20% equity in their home, they can call up their lender and ask them to remove PMI. You usually have to wait two years to do that. Certainly worth the offset. Now, if we fast forward the same five years that it would have taken them to save the additional down payment of $60,000, here's what would have happened. The home they bought for $400,000 is now worth $510,000. That means with their equity, the down payment, they now have $130,000 in equity. And then what's 20% of $510,000? It's $102,000. Well, they have well over the 20% needed in equity and they no longer need to carry PMI. In fact, it was right around year four where they could have removed PMI. Now let's walk through the numbers. Again, sorry for all the numbers, but what's the annual cost of PMI? $3,800. Total cost of PMI over the four years that they would be required to pay it, $15,200. This is the cost that everybody's trying to avoid. That means after we take out the cost of PMI, their net equity growth would have been $110,000. Now, if we divide that over the four years, that's roughly $23,000 a year in growth after all their costs. This is what they would have missed out on by concentrating on the cost of PMI and not the entire equation of appreciation. So here's how you wanna phrase the question when it comes to PMI. Would you spend $3,800 a year to net $23,000 in growth? I mean, it sounds like a silly question. Of course you would. But so many new home buyers are actually contemplating on missing out on the growth so that they can save the cost of PMI. Now let's get real here for a second. None of us can predict the future growth of real estate. And who knows if it could go backwards like it did in 2008. But I see these same kind of questions in several financial decisions out there. As we've discussed before, Dave Ramsey, as an example, wants you to pay off a mortgage that might be 3% or lower and do it as fast as you can when you could take your money and earn a higher rate of return, such as 5% or 7% or more, and earn that spread. Even Dave brags about using 10% mutual funds which I still don't believe after costs and fees and taxes, you're even gonna get close to that. And we'd love to have Dave tell us which funds those are. But even doing that would be better off than paying the mortgage. We're also at an all time low with interest rates. It's not too difficult to make more than our money is costing us on the interest of the mortgage. See, Dave and so many others are so consumed with the money that's gonna be paid to the bank in interest rather than the growth you could get and the wealth you could build by using the bank's money at these cheap rates for as long as they'll let you. And as I said earlier, people often step over dollars to pick up dimes. In the case of PMI costs, do you really care if you have to pay for PMI for four years as long as the potential appreciation is higher than the cost? If that's the case, then you win. And as many of you know, we like to leverage life insurance. Sometimes there's a concern about using the bank's money at 3% and then turning around and making 5%. They start to focus on how much they're gonna be paying the bank in interest rather than the spread they're making using the bank's money. So the question I like to ask is, if you could earn a 2% spread on $1,000 of the bank's money, would you do it? So on $1,000, that's 20 bucks. So for every thousand you borrow from the bank, you could make $20. Well, what if I told you that in order to make that $20, you had to pay the bank $30? <laughs> in other words, you'd actually make $50 with the bank's money, but then they're gonna charge you $30 to use it or the interest, and that would be the cost of using their money. But in the end, you made $20 and it wasn't even your money. It was just like a printing press. Now the question is, are you focused on the $30 that you're paying the bank or on the $20 that you get to put in your pocket with virtually no risk? I hope you said it's more important to concentrate on the $20 in your pocket. 
So if you would do this with $1,000 from the bank, would you do it with $10,000? That means that $10,000 would make $500, you would pay the bank $300, and you end up with $200 in your pocket. If that sounds good, how about $100,000? That puts $2,000 in your pocket with the spread. How about a million? <laughs> now we're talking $20,000 of basically free money. Anybody for 10 million? I mean, why not? If you have a way without risk to make money and make that spread on the bank's money, I would take all that they'd let me use. That's the power of leverage. Now, to wrap this up, PMI is kind of like leverage. With less money down and little cost, you get to potentially participate in the higher appreciation of what's going on in the home values of real estate. And as long as the home value is going up faster than the cost of PMI, you're gonna win. Now, you don't wanna step over dollars of profit so that you can save a few dimes of cost. The same with leveraging safe and guaranteed assets. You can turn your safe money into double digit returns. You can create a very good income stream. You can keep your money liquid. You can have a legacy plan for your family and you can do it all tax free. Not bad. Now, simple and easy principles that can build your wealth faster. If you wanna see how this might work in your situation, just click on the time trade link below and we'll set up a strategy session. It's certainly worth exploring for sure. In the meantime, if you have any questions, send them to questions at wisemoneytools.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a video. And until next week, take care.